All right, guys, good morning. Um, so main thing that I want to talk about is I've been kind of away for the last couple of days. Uh, went on a trip with my friends. Um, and the hardest thing is kind of coming back to a market that you are not aware of, right? So just as a recap, guys, last month, January, I ended $35,000 with one red day and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, no trade days. So not too bad at all. Basically, I kind of want to, when I come back after not trading for a few days, right? The biggest thing that I have to do is understand what type of market cycle we are in, right? So the main thing that I want to talk about is at least from what I've been seeing that has been working. So first things first is this TENX. So TENX is SSR and low float. Okay. So we have been seeing a lot of these SSR stocks just going absolutely bonkers, right? We've been seeing all these stocks just go nuts. And for me, guys, for me, SSR scares the living hell out of me, right? It scares the living hell out of me because I know that it can be manipulated, right? So all these pumpers, all these manipulators, they love SSR, right? Because contrary to popular belief, people think that if a stock is on SSR, you can't short it. That's not true. You have to short an uptick, right? You have to short an uptick. You have to short it when it goes up. And what ends up happening is when a stock is on reverse split, most of the long participants, right? Most of the long participants don't want to sell. So oftentimes it's just short sellers that are getting involved in these SSR stocks, especially that are low floats and ending up pushing them higher. I mean, think about it. The stock went from nine to 19 with no pullback. Wouldn't this be a good short? Boom, it goes 17 to 22. And if you look at the daily chart, guys, if you look at the daily chart, I mean, what's stopping this from going to 30? So SSR stocks have always been scaring me that we've kind of been in a market cycle where it's low float and SSR that has the money flow. Now, what has been working in this market cycle, right? What has been working? Anything that has to do with AI has been working. So PLTR just released earnings. They're up 20%, some sort of AI company. Any type of AI catalyst is going to go nuts. So that's number one. That's kind of what I've been seeing is AI has been kind of going crazy. Low floats have been crazy. Now, what has been working on the short side, right? So more often than not, what's been working on the short side lately has been forgotten stocks, side stocks, and stocks that people just really aren't too aware of or people don't really care about too much anymore, right? So that leads to stocks like, um, what was it? BRTX. BRTX just got smoked today, right? BRTX got smoked today. But you can see that when it had its move yesterday, it faded down, bounced to VWAP, and failed. What we have to find is we have to find stocks that are topping out pre-market and failing. Okay. So as of this morning, as of this morning, I'm not really seeing anything too crazy yet in terms of that, but we'll get into it. So first things first is TNX is a do not short. Aside from that, guys, aside from that, I see a bunch of other stocks moving today, but mainly my focus today is to understand, all right, I haven't been here for a few days. I haven't traded for a few days. I'm kind of rusty. And because I'm kind of rusty, I got to make sure that I'm at least taking it slow, getting a little bit of confidence back and coming back to normal. Because if not, if not, I'm going to be my own worst enemy, right? So coming into today, I'm just taking it slow. I'm waiting to see what happens. I'm not going to be too aggressive and I want to attack the forgotten stocks rather than try to find the top on the hot stock. Does that make sense? Guys? Does that make sense? I'm not looking to find the top on the hot stock of the day. So as you guys know, the way that I build the watch list is I always look at the previous day's watch list. And since I was not here, I have to look at Tom's watch list. So let me go through Tom's watch list. NRBO, uh, low float, kind of pulling back, not really interested. IMBS, I think this had an offering, so not really interested. CDIO, CDIO kind of looks like the volume is done, the range is done, so nothing there. So it looks like all the stocks that were moving yesterday, at least in Tom's watch list that were posted, were nothing that is kind of too ideal today. So we can look at now what's moving today. AGFY. AGFY, I really don't like penny stocks, guys, but you can see that the last time this AGFY ran, it sold off all day. It looks like the top of this candle was 125, and it looks like the top of this candle was 130. So assume 120, 130 is as a top. But maybe if we get a bounce towards like one, 
110, 120. I would look to short, but kind of looks like it's failing right now. So AGF, oops, AGFY. AGFY, last time that it ran, it faded all day. Looks like it's fading free markets already. Ideally, a bounce toward one, 110. 122 short with a 140 stop. TNX, hot stock of the day, avoiding short at all costs. TNX, low float. SSR, hot stock of the day. Even if this stock fails, I still think it will trap. So I will not look to short it at all. There was CHEA from yesterday, CHEA. So I would say CHEA pop towards 10 or 11. GRR, former runner, two potential trades. Short when it's red and add on one dollar break or let it continue to break out above free market highs. So NVIDIA, SMCI, extended large caps, monitoring, monitoring for a potential fade day soon. But this is non-niche and this is outside of my playbook. So we'll mostly watch and learn. PLTR, I mean, I don't know. Maybe a push towards 2050 or 21 for a short. I think that's it, guys. I mean, that's it. I'm not I'm not really seeing anything too crazy today. Again, like I said, a lot of the money flow is in TENX. So I'm expecting TENX to just be the crazy one. Uh, yeah. My highest probability idea is PLTR, but I'm not really too in love with that yet. As you guys see, 2050 is a resistance uh, from the daily chart. So I'll just try to look to piggyback that resistance if it pops up there. I took a small starter there in that 2050 line ish. Was small, guys. This is not in my wheelhouse, so I don't want to get too aggressive. So if I see some sort of bounce that fails, maybe I'll add a little bit. But again, not looking to get too aggressive, guys. Not looking to get too aggressive on a non-niche stock. As I mentioned, 2050, guys, was the line from... Uh, <clears throat> 2050 was the line from the daily chart. It hit 2050 and failed. Now 20 is testing. I'll try a small add there at 20. But once again, I'm not being too aggressive. Yet. Not being too aggressive yet. Let me draw some support and resistance. Ideally, this bounce fails, go back under 20, and I'll look for some covers. Got another ad there, 2002. This is going to be my final ad. <clears throat> if it reclaims over 2030, I'll just stop out, but I think that this is going to fail. So far, so good. $20 is resilient. Maybe it has to do something with options. And we shall see. It's a really tough one to short because of the spread. I don't know if I want to do it. I don't know yet. Let's see. Let's see. So PLTR, good cover on half. I'm just going to look to cover the other half on a dip if I can get it. And video is kind of weak today. So I'm just going to try it. Fuck it. SMCI, I just took a very small starter short. So PLTR pretty large bounce. I'm glad I locked in some on the dip. Just looking for another dip to just take the rest off. SMCI is working, but I'm not getting aggressive there because it's not usually in my wheelhouse. Reduced a little bit of PLTR on this dip. 
reduce some more 20 bucks i'm just protecting myself here guys protecting myself if it fails it fails but i just don't want to get too uh too crazy so smci this is why i was small size just in case of a large rebound smci is not a trade for most new traders SMCI, I'm not going to get aggressive here, guys. I'm just going to take the easy money if it comes to me. PLTR is a little bit too strong for my liking. So as you see, I covered most of my position there. It's left literally extremely tiny. I got like 50 shares left, which I don't really care about. PLTR, I'm just going to take the rest off. I don't really care. Out of the rest of PLTR on the 50 shares, still a pretty green trade. PLTR, very, very good covers there. Very good covers. Maybe retry it at 21. Maybe retry it at 21 is what I'm thinking. 